If you want results like this, you've got to have this. But no matter what your experience level is, CO2 can cause frustrating problems. Here are seven reasons why your CO2 is not working and how to fix them. All right, number one, you don't have any bubbles coming through your diffuser. That can happen for a few different reasons. Most often, you just haven't let your diffuser sit in the tank long enough. All you gotta do, turn up the pressure on that CO2 cylinder, push a lot of that air through the tubing, and you'll start to see bubbles come through this in no time. Then just make sure you back that pressure back down to safe levels before you do anything else. Another issue can be this black little O-ring here under the bubble counter. Sometimes that little guy goes missing, and if it does, I guarantee you, you're leaking gas. Beyond that, just make sure you're checking your fittings. Everything's nice and tight. You have no leaks or anything like that, cracks in your tubing, and you should be good to go. The second reason is your check valve is upside down. You see this little arrow right here? That is indicating the flow of air, and that only happens one direction. If this is reversed, you're not getting any air into your diffuser. All right, number three, you have the wrong tubing, and it's an easy mistake to make. This is high elasticity PVC and it is used for air pumps. This is polyurethane tubing and it's used for CO2. The difference is with this material, gas cannot escape, but with this, it will leak and that's why you don't have any CO2 in your system. Number four, you've got diffuser problems and that can be you have the wrong size diffuser for the tank that you have, little diffusers for nano tanks, big diffusers for bigger tanks. If you have a little diffuser, you're not gonna get enough CO2 into a larger system. Also, oftentimes people will place diffusers too high. And what happens there is you have too much CO2 escaping out the top. It's not dissolving in the water column. So make sure that you slide that all the way down to the bottom like we have it in this tank. And on top of that, you might find that your diffuser gets dirty, it gets algae on it, gets debris on it. If that happens, don't rub it with your finger because you're just gonna push it into the air stone. Instead, while it's running, drop it into a one to four bleach solution for about five to 10 minutes, depending on how dirty it is, rinse it with water, and then put it back in your tank. All right, number five, you don't have your bubble counter calibrated properly. And this is telling you how much CO2 is going into your system. Anywhere from five to 10 gallon aquarium, you want this to be about a bubble a second. If you're in the 15, 20, all the way up to 40 gallons, two to three bubbles a second. 50 gallons or bigger, three to five bubbles a second. The way you know you have it right is that drop checker right up there. If it's green, you're good to go. Yellow, too much CO2, dial it back down just slightly, wait a couple hours and see how it registers. If it's blue, you don't have enough. Now, one hot tip on this, oftentimes these get filled with water and where that becomes a pain is it will evaporate and you'll lose sight of how much CO2 is going into your system. The fix for that, grab a mineral oil, fill it up with mineral oil like this, and that will stay in there for a long time. All right, issue number six is your CO2 timing with respect to your light. Let's think about this for a second. When your light is on, your plants are absorbing CO2 and releasing oxygen. When your light is off, they're no longer doing that. So you do not want your CO2 running when your light is off because you'll get too much CO2 into your aquarium, which is not safe for your fish. So here's what you do. Get yourself a little timer like this. Plug your solenoid from your CO2 into this and have it turn on about an hour before your light so the CO2 will build up into the water column and then start to get absorbed by those plants when the light comes on. And then have it turn off about 30 minutes after your light goes off to make sure you don't end up with too much CO2 in your aquarium. Number seven is a rapid loss of pressure. And the way you fix that is you get a dual stage regulator. This will control the pressure at two different points from the cylinder into the regulator and from the regulator out into your aquarium. And that will prevent a rapid dump of CO2 into your aquarium, which can be very harmful to your fish. If you've made it this far in the video and you don't yet actually have CO2 and a lot of what we just talked about sounded intimidating, here's an easy solution. Just get yourself an all-in-one CO2 kit, super easy to set up. You'll have this thing up and running in your aquarium in less than 10 minutes. Once you get comfortable with this, you can move on to bigger systems. If this video helped you out, please make sure you subscribe to the channel for more just like it, and we'll see you next time.